what's up? My name is Techno, but here for Troubleshoot, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be showing you a rather useful plugin for OBS Studio. Basically, if you're one who streams and has an overlay, but you'd like to record your gameplay, etc., your webcam, without the overlay in it, or possibly your webcam that's usually in a small corner at full quality as well, how exactly do you do that? Well, previously it hasn't been possible, but now if you use OBS Studio, it's a plugin that you can simply download, install, and use. Basically, you can stream and the rest as you usually would, but you can record your stream as usual by clicking the record button, but you can actually record your gameplay and your webcam as well at full quality, completely separate, while still using only OBS. It's pretty cool and pretty magical the way that it works. That's exactly what I'll be showing you here in this video. The first step is actually downloading it. In the description down below, you'll find a link to Source Record, released May 13th, 2021. When you get to this page over here, you'll find the source code at the very top over here if you're interested, but for most people, what you'll do is click the download text right over here. That'll take you across to this page here, where you can then choose the installer. Of course, you can download the plugin manually and install it yourself, but it's a lot easier to download the installer.zip, open it up, then simply run the installer inside of it. After clicking yes to giving an admin, you'll see the folder of OBS Studio over here. Simply verify it's correct if you don't know where your OBS is installed. For me, this is the correct place. It'll install to the same folder as OBS. I'll click next and you should see something like this. Do you want to install it there anyway? Click yes, next, next, and finally finish. At this point, the plugin's been installed, but of course, if I open up OBS, nothing will have changed. What you need to do from here is reopen OBS if you had it open before installing the actual plugin. There we go. I've now fired up OBS once again and nothing's changed. Or well, has it? Simply right click one of your sources over here and then click filters. When you get to this page, click the plus button and this time you'll see a source record option. Simply adding this, pulls up this over here, give it a name, I'll leave it as source record and then turn it off. This is important as whenever this filter is on and the requirements are met, it'll start recording, which can be rather annoying. So now that we've turned it off by hiding it in the top left, what we're gonna do is have a look at this list of options right over here. Unfortunately, you can't make it any bigger. At the very top, we have record mode set to none by default, but we can have it as always, streaming, recording, streaming or recording, or virtual camera. Basically, whenever one of these criteria is met, it'll start recording this source over here with the settings that we'll define below in just a moment. So usually what you do is you'd set it to something like streaming if you're someone who streams, but you'd like to record your game capture in a full quality file and maybe your webcam in a full quality file as well so that you don't have to worry about them overriding each other later. You have text over it, donations, etc., etc., in your final video. So I'll set this to say virtual camera as I won't be streaming. Whenever my virtual camera is enabled, it'll start recording whatever is on my screen inside of the source over here. As soon as I start my virtual camera, all of the elements that I have this source record plugin in, set to virtual camera record mode, will start recording at full quality as well. Of course, you can set the output path, which I'd recommend setting to a different place if you'd like to categorize them. Otherwise, make sure that you have the file format name over here set similar, but not the same. So I'll go ahead and leave this here as I record to a different folder, but I'll show you what I mean by the file name formatting. If you head into your OBS settings, then the advanced tab, you'll see recording, file name formatting, and a format over here. I think by default, this will be exactly the same, but of course, you'll want to make sure of that. Why? Well, if you're someone like me, I usually record my videos with the date, say 2021 0705 space the time, which is currently 012300. And then I'll usually use an underscore followed by something else. So let's say camera, desktop, or something along those lines. If we go ahead and open up the filters page once again, source record over here, what I'll do with the file name here is if I'm recording to the same place, I'll add an underscore or a space or something like that. And I'll say desktop. This way, I'll have a normal file that's dated and timestamped, and I'll have another one that's named exactly the same with a different bit of text after it telling me exactly what it is. I don't think that this can be exactly the same as your recording, otherwise some issues will happen if two files are trying to record to the same place. So anyway, when I start recording, it'll record my video as usual. When I start my virtual camera, triggering the source record, it'll record this input in full quality to here. Choosing the rec format and the rest of the settings here are very similar to your normal recording settings. And if you have any experience with that, you'll probably be able to set this up just fine. 
I'd recommend leaving it as MKV, as if your PC crashes, you'll be able to go back into the video and save everything that's there. If you have it set to MP4, you have to actually stop the recording for it to save properly and for any of it to be usable. Here is of course a remixer built into OBS, but that's outside of the scope of this video. Basically, it'll take MKV and make it MP4. Scrolling down, we have Replay Buffer, which you can set up if you'd like to use. Basically, if you have a Replay Buffer set up for something like Instant Replays, you'll be able to hit the key and this will be able to play back the last however many seconds. Pretty useful. Scrolling down even further, we have a separate stream output, which you probably wouldn't really use, but of course, if you like to stream to two places at once, streaming only one input to a certain place and the rest of it to another, that is something you can do if you wanted. Simply input a server, a key, and set the stream mode over here to whatever you'd like. So at the very top, recording whenever my virtual camera is enabled, and down here, you can choose different options or the same options. If I were to set them both to virtual camera and enable my virtual camera in OBS, it'll start recording this input at full quality and it'll start streaming it to whatever we put in here. Right below it, we can set different audio if we'd like to record audio as well. You can turn this on and then simply choose an audio input from whatever audio inputs you currently have set up in OBS Studio. Pretty useful. Then at the very bottom, we have Encoder. We can choose between software, NVENC, NVIDIA NVENC H.264 new, which is currently broken as far as I hear, and X264. Of course, if you have an AMD GPU, those codecs will be shown here as well. And if you're using a plugin that adds extra codecs for whatever reason, those should also show up there as usual. And of course, right below it, we have all of the familiar options to set up that codec. So if I set it to say NVENC, you'll see only options here, CBR, VBR, bitrate, etc., etc. I'll just leave it at this and set the recording to virtual camera. So whenever I turn on my virtual camera, this input will be recorded. Let's go ahead and test this out. All that we have to do is simply make sure that the plugin is enabled by opening up filters and making sure that the effect isn't hidden. This way, whenever we trigger it, it should work properly. Cool, now the plugin's turned on and we're ready to start. Let's go ahead and make this obvious. I'll go ahead and drag and drop an image into OBS that I'm currently using to record. You'll see this obnoxious square on the left hand side. And if I move this around, it'll be behind the actual image itself. Let's go ahead and test to see if we can record just the input without anything on top of it. So let's say I currently have a stream overlay and I enable my virtual camera. That was the trigger to start recording. If I move this window around, you'll see that it goes behind that square over there. However, if we record just the input itself, that square shouldn't be there. Let's go ahead and test that out. I'll stop my virtual camera and I'll go ahead and open up my videos folder. Upon opening it up, you see a file inside of it. If I go ahead and play said file, you'll see it open up over here and it doesn't have the Discord icon on it. You can see it in OBS, but you can't see it in the video over here. Now, of course, it's rather stuttery as I haven't set up settings properly, but that's something you'll have to play around with. And I'd recommend setting them something similar to the recording settings you already have currently. As far as I know, NVIDIA limits how many NVENC sessions you can have going on a GPU at a time. And I think that limit is somewhere around two or three. So if you're using NVENC to record, you won't be able to record more than two or three inputs at the same time. And that includes recording your actual final video and streaming your video. Each of those use different sessions as far as I know, so you'll only really be able to stream and record and record a separate input. That's three sessions right there. I think it's three or four. Anyway, there's a hard limit that you can't get past unless you do some cheaty coding that I won't go into here. And that limit is of course removed if you buy a business grade or whatever they are. They're the way more expensive workstation cards that shouldn't have these limits. But of course, that is all nulled if you use the X264 CPU encoder. There's no worry about the session cap there. Anyway, this video has gone into far too much detail. You now know how to use this plugin. It's super useful, especially if you'd like to record, say, your webcam at full quality and your game or desktop at full quality as well. Super simple, and I'd highly recommend you check it out. Anyways, my name's been Technobi here for Troubleshoot. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!